You remember the pinhole camera? This is the simplest device to form an image uh, of a three-dimensional dim scene on a two-dimensional surface. A box with an opening and light passes through that hole and then you will have the image flipped on the back of that box, right? So straight rays of light pass through the pinhole and form an inverted image of the object. The X and Y, X and, remember, this is a three-dimensional object reflected as a two-dimensional object in the box. Now the location of each point in X and Y can be calculated using the focal. In practice, the aperture, the aperture is the opening that allows light to go through a, into a camera or to be projected on the other side. So in practice, the aperture must be larger to admit more light. And then lenses are placed in the aperture, in the opening, the lenses, to focus. The bundle of rays from each scene point into the corresponding point on the image plane. And so this location here where we have the lens is actually the aperture, right? So that's the location. That's what we call the aperture because you know rays will pass through that. Remember, you have the focal point, that's F the distance between the lens, the center of the lens and the focal point, and the distance of the object and V. If we have lenses, we have um, real or imaginary, virtual, real or virtual, inverted or non-inverted and magnified and you know non-magnified images because of these lenses. Image formation. We have optical parameters, we have photometric parameters, and we have geometric parameters. The optical parameters are the lens type, concave or convex, right? And then you have the focal length, uh, depending on the geometry of the lens, how F is far away from the center of it, the field of view, and then the photometric are the type, intensity, and direction of illumination, and reflectance properties of the surface, and the geometrical parameters are the type of proje projection, position, and orientation of the camera, and perspective distortion, distortion introduced by the image processing. If you work in image processing, in medical imaging, and image processing, which is a really growing field right now, you need to learn more about these. If you want to analyze an image, you need to have these, this information before you can analyze the image. And the other thing that in research, you cannot analyze, you know, build a MATLAB code to analyze images, is, and then any one of these is changing. They have to be the, consistent. You have to have the same parameters to be able to extract useful information. Otherwise, you will have the story, you will be comparing apples and oranges. All of these should all be consistent all the time, and you should know about them. So for example, you can't take a, an image of a slide, a histology star, a slide today, and then come tomorrow and then change the intensity of light. That's going to give you different results. You can't compare between the two. So that's the importance of these parameters. You remember the convex lenses? Um, they concentrate rays into one focal point, and then the concave lenses are the ones that distort light uh, away. Do you remember from physics what your image will look like in concave? Depends on the location of the object and how far it is from the focal point. Now, in concave lenses, the image is always uh, non-inverted, non-real or virtual, and shorter, the size of it. But concave is a different story. Uh, convex, sorry, convex. Images, the real, virtual, enlarged or reduced, erectic or inverted. Most of the cameras that you're going to be dealing with uh, and taking your images are actually, they have convex lenses. You know the focal point and the focal length, those are important. The center of the lens is also important. So if you have rays coming from an object through a convex lens, if the principal, the principal ray passing through the focal point on the other side, the central ray will go the same path, and the, any rays that pass through the focal point, we call the focal ray, and then they will come parallel to the line, the central line, and then you, you have your object. Depending on how far this object from the focal point, you will be getting enlarged or shrinked, flipped, or you know, erected or, or, or inverted ones. This is what happened for each uh, object, if it's beyond the 2F, then the image is between 2F and F on the other side, which is the focal point, uh, at 2F, at 2F, between 2F and 2F, and that beyond, then no image. But it's important to review them and know that we need these information to understand the parameters or the image that we are dealing with. This is side convection also for measuring the magnification. Remember the object distance, DO, DI, if it's positive or negative, 
that's the distance of the image. If it's positive, real image. If it's negative, it's virtual. And it, HI is a positive, that's erect image. And if it's negative, that's inverted. F is positive or negative, converging or divergence. That's the formula of finding the magnification, which is HI divided of H object. That's the height and that's the distances. And that's the lens equation of how to find them, the distance of the object and the image. O over F equals one over DO plus one over DI.